guys, it's Gretchen and welcome back to my channel. I am very excited for today's video. This is going to be another one of my comprehensive guide to insert Pearson here. And these video topics are always voted on by my patrons over on Patreon. And for this month, they voted for what is my favorite ear piercing the conch. So if you've ever wanted to know a little bit more about the conch or if you're interested in getting the conch and you just kind of want a little bit more information about it, hopefully you will find this video informative as well as useful. Now, like I mentioned, conch is probably my favorite ear piercing. I absolutely love mine. I had zero problems with it. It was like a brief moment of pain an hour after I got it done, but other than that, it was smooth sailing. So for these comprehensive guide videos, I do have five kind of like topics that I focus on. The first one is what is a conch piercing? I'm gonna tell you what exactly it is. The second is procedure and pain. What to expect when getting the conch done as well as what the pain might be. We'll get to that. Third, we have healing and aftercare. What should you expect from the healing process of a conch piercing as well as how should you care for it? The fourth topic will be jewelry size and what should you expect a standard conch piercing to be size wise? And the fifth and final topic that is pretty much everyone's favorite, jewelry options. What can you wear in a conch? So let's go ahead and get started with what exactly is the conch piercing? If you're interested in the conch piercing, what exactly does that mean? The conch refers to the piercing that takes place in the center most part of your ear, not the dath and not the tragus, right in here. You see this little cup area, that big opening right there? That's where your conch goes. So when you hear the word conch, what might you think of? If you thought of the shell, you're actually correct. That's where the name comes from is the curvature of the shell is very similar to the curvature of your ear. Now, one thing that I think is pretty interesting about the conch is its pronunciation. You look at the word conch and you would think conch, right? Like the shell. Sometimes you may hear it pronounced conch. Yes, conch. So this is kind of similar to the whole daith doth scenario. However, unlike the whole daith doth situation, conch isn't used that often, if ever. But some people still adhere to its pronunciation and swear that it's conch, even though it's literally spelled the same way as the shell, which is pronounced conch. Something to know about conch piercings. There are two different kinds. There is the inner conch and there is the outer conch. What's the difference? Excellent question. Honestly, in my research that I was doing, it kind of seems like there's no set in stone answer because everywhere I was looking gave a different response. Now I will go over what kind of seemed to be more of the standard response, but then there were some other responses that I'm sitting there going like, are you sure about that? So from what I gathered, the inner conch is what is referred to as the standard conch piercing. So if you ask for a conch piercing, you are most likely gonna get what is deemed the inner conch. So this one is located lower down in the ear in the actual cut part of your ear. So mine, is a inner conch piercing. It is in the cup, it is in this area. The outer conch piercing is where people kind of differ on what exactly it is. Placement is so specific that if you don't get it correct, it could be considered another type of piercing. If it is not done in what is deemed the conch area, it could just be viewed as a mid helix piercing. So for correct placement, and this is what I gathered, it needs to be done in the conch area, but not on the edge. Are you keeping up? Does that make sense? Because believe me, after the days that I researched, it wasn't make a whole lot of sense to me. I'll do my best to kind of show you images that I found to show you the difference between an inner conch or an outer conch, but really and truly there were so many discrepancies that I'm not sure anyone really has like set in stone what the difference is. All I could get is that a lot of people kind of agreed on the inner conch, what exactly it is, where it's located, everything like that. But the outer conch, there are a lot of discrepancies. Like some people were saying that if done incorrectly, it could be a mid helix. Some people were saying if it was done incorrectly, it could be considered a flat. A lot of discrepancies. Now I will say another thing in my research was saying that to know the difference, 
Inner conch piercings, you usually can only wear a stud in them. Outer conch, you're looking more of a hoop. Mine is technically an inner conch, but I can definitely wear a hoop in it. Explain that one to me. So now that you know at least the overall idea of what the conch is, as well as its placement in the broad sense, let's look at how a conch piercing is done, as well as the pain you may encounter. So the conch piercing is a little bit thicker cartilage than you may find in just a regular old helix piercing, but it's not as thick as what you may find for your daith, doth, or your roof. Again, everyone's pain tolerance is very different. It's gonna vary. What's painful to you may not be to me, and what's painful to me may not be painful to you. But based on the information of the thickness of the cartilage, you may find that it's a little bit more painful than a regular helix piercing, but not quite as bad as getting your day or your rook done. Based on personal experience, mine I'd rank as a three out of 10. One being least painful, 10 being most painful. It was not that bad. And I attribute this to the fact that it is a pretty open space. Like look at the area of your conch, that curvature, that cup looking area. It's pretty open compared to other parts of your ear makes it a little bit more easy for your piercer to maneuver, to actually get in there and pierce it, which kind of makes it a little less uncomfortable. Because if you've ever gotten your day done, you'll know that it's not a comfortable experience because it's such a tight space. Quite the opposite with the conch. It's very open, it's out there, pretty easy to get to. The piercer doesn't have any troubles getting to it. I feel like that attributes a lot to what is considered pain, is just it's uncomfortable. Unlike some other piercings, this one doesn't necessarily need a clamp. However, I mention this a lot. Just because a piercer chooses to use a clamp or not does not mean it's incorrect. A clamp is based on personal preference and comfortability. If your piercer is more comfortable using a clamp, they're gonna use a clamp. If your piercer is more comfortable not using a clamp, they're not gonna use a clamp. They are the professionals. They're going with what is more comfortable for them to perform the piercing for you that you so very much want. So don't think just because, oh, well my piercer didn't use a clamp on my conch piercing. That doesn't mean they did it wrong or anything like that. Also, I can't imagine that a clamp in this shaped area is very easy to do. So I see comments like that all the time. Be like, oh my God, they didn't use a clamp. There are a lot of piercings that don't need a clamp. I guarantee you, they don't need a clamp. All right. Now that we've covered what a conch is, as well as what to expect when getting one, it's time to move on to the healing process as well as aftercare. So the typical healing time for a conch, typical healing time, six to nine months, but can take up to a year because it is cartilage. Cartilage piercings can be a pain in the butt and they may take a lot longer to heal than expected. But the typical time is six to nine months, six being kind of like the minimum of how long it'll take to heal, nine being more of the average, and then 12 months being in case you've encountered any problems. And no one needs to come into the comments and be like, mine was healed after two months. No, it wasn't. So how should you care for a conch piercing? You should care for a piercing pretty much the same across the board. First of all, always handle a piercing with clean hands, whether it's a new piercing or a healed piercing. Always handle it with clean hands. If you are a side sleeper, do everything to avoid sleeping on that side. So when I got my conch done, it's on my right ear. I slept on my left side because I am a side sleeper. I have to sleep on my left side though because this is very much out there and touching everything. If I was gonna sleep on that, that wouldn't have been good at all. My piercing would have been hella irritated. So if you are a side sleeper, sleep the opposite side of where you got this piercing done. Aftercare is pretty standard for the conch piercing like any other piercing. Saline solution is going to be your friend. So you can do either a pre-made one or you can make your own. Please, please, please do not overdo the cleaning. I know you may think that if you clean a little bit more often, maybe it'll heal faster or heal better. No, you may actually do more harm than good. I always say twice a day is enough. Do once in the morning, once in the evening, unless you notice a whole lot of like crustiness building up, try not to overdo it, but also don't underdo it. Once is not enough for a brand new piercing. If you use a pre-made for the conch piercing, pretty easy. You can just like directly spray onto the piercing. Now you will encounter the fact that it may kind of go down into your ear, but one thing that I recommend for people is to just take like a cotton round or a cotton ball and just like tuck it right in there so that when you spray the conch, the liquid's not going into your ear and it's getting soaked up by the round or the ball itself. If you create your own solution, make sure you're doing the proper measurements. So the proper measurements to make your own are 
eight ounces of distilled or bottled water. Don't use tap water. There's too many harsh things in tap water that can actually irritate a piercing. You're gonna mix one eighth to one fourth of a teaspoon of non-iodized sea salt. Non-iodized means that it's iodine free. The more salt you use, the more irritated the piercing could be. So do not exceed one fourth of a teaspoon. I usually stick around one eighth if I'm making my own just because I don't want to overdo it. When using your own mixture, just put it in a cup that can hold the correct amount. I always take a Q-tip. A lot of people don't like Q-tips. I personally have never had a problem with them. The thing you have to keep in mind about Q-tips is that sometimes the little fibers can get stuck on a piercing. Be cautious when using it and don't get overzealous and then have the fibers stick to the piercing. So if you're making your own, just take the Q-tip, dip it into the mixture, and just nicely go around the piercing, both sides, get the crusties out and everything like that. Don't overdo it, don't wiggle it around or, any or anything like that, and definitely don't twist the jewelry. You may find that the jewelry just moves naturally during the cleaning process, but that's fine as long as you're not sitting there purposefully turning it. You can use a gentle cleanser, but it's not recommended to use it in the early weeks of your piercing. Never ever use things like alcohol, hydrogen peroxide, neosporin, or Bactine on a Pearson. Bactine even says on their website, don't use us on a Pearson. And don't mess with the jewelry. Like I just said, don't sit there playing with it. Don't sit there twisting it. Leave it alone unless you're cleaning it. That's the only time you should mess with it. Much like other Pearsons, you can usually change out the initial jewelry after about six weeks. So you will most likely be pierced with something a little bit longer. It's gonna seem way too long, but you will find that swelling is a possibility and you are gonna want that long piece of jewelry. Even though it seems excessive, you're gonna realize, oh, this was necessary. But at about six week mark, you should be good to go back to your piercer and have it downsized. All right, moving on now to jewelry sizing. What should you expect the size of your conch piercing to be? So unlike other cartilage piercings, the standard size for a conch piercing kind of varies. 16 is a pretty average common size for other cartilage piercings. Conch, it varies from 16 to 14. A lot of times you will find piercers go with 14 gauge. Mine was pierced with a 14 gauge and I stuck at this size. I really liked how it looked, so I just stuck with it. The reason why a lot of piercers go with 14 is because if you do ultimately decide to size down, later on, it's much easier to size down cartilage than it is to size up. My mom also got her conch done. She decided to size down to 16. She's perfectly happy with it. I stayed at 14, perfectly happy with it. So it's all a matter of your preference. Now I will say, I, again, I don't mind 14 gauge, but there are far less jewelry options for 14 gauge than there are for 16 gauge. Which leads us into the final topic, jewelry options. What can you actually wear in a conch piercing? There are a ton of options that you can wear in a conch. You can wear a segment ring, a horseshoe ring, a captive bead ring or CBR, a seamless ring. You can potentially wear a septum clicker. It really kind of depends though on the shape of the bar. If it's a straight one, you may not want to do that because it might pull a little bit on your ear. But if you find a septum clicker that has a little bit of a curvature and acts like a hoop, that's perfectly fine. You can also do posts like labre jewelry, like anything that you might find in lip piercings or even nostril piercings or even regular helix piercings. You can definitely wear a post in a conch piercing. And finally, retainers. You can wear retainers in pretty much anything. So this is just a quick little guide to conch piercings. Again, it's very confusing. Like you don't realize it until you start doing a little bit of research and understanding about the conch piercing that there are two different kinds and there are a little bit of discrepancies on that one kind. So if you're thinking about getting a conch piercing, make sure you know which one you want and where exactly you want it. Let me know in the comments below if you yourself have a conch piercing. What do you think about the conch? Again, it is my favorite ear piercing. I absolutely love it over all the other ear piercings. What are your thoughts on it? Also let me know in the comments below if you have been thinking about getting a conch piercing, what's stopping you from getting it, have you just not had time? Let me know your thoughts. Special thank you to my patrons. You can help support the channel on Patreon while having access to videos early, view and patron only content, and more. But that is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a big ol' thumbs up. Go on down there and hit that subscribe button wherever it may be, because I don't know. Even though I do, this is just my shtick now. Also hit that notification bell in case you wanna know when I upload, and in case YouTube wants to let you know when I upload, because I would really appreciate it. And until next time, bye guys. Mm -hmm.